Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 19 to start, just one verse. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your many, many blessings. And God, we, our hearts are a little heavy knowing that Pastor Mike is in the hospital and uh, uh, he's in need of care. And so we ask God that you will be not just his great physician, but Lord, his healer. And we'll praise you for it and thank you for it. Now bless your word to our hearts, we ask in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 19, and I think most of you know this verse. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. When one is called to a different country um, as a mission missionary, or someone who moves like from Korea to the United States of America, they want to learn as much as they can about their country, uh, their language. And, you know, it blesses my heart to see these older Korean people as they are endeavoring to learn English. Now, it's not hard for you younger people to learn English, but it's harder for the older people. It would be terrible for me to go to go to Korea. In fact, uh, yesterday, my my oldest grandson went to Korea for a year. He's in the Air Force. And, uh, and uh, so we, we, uh, we're praying that God will bless him. And, and uh, he, he's just a wonderful Christian man with three Christian little boys and uh, a Christian lady. So we're thankful for that. But you know, it's, it's always a blessing when, when people will learn as much as they can. Well, uh, as believers, we have a place prepared for us in heaven when we die. And it behooves us to know some things about our heavenly home, about our hope. Uh, if in this life only we had hope, well, our hope goes far beyond the grave, all the way to glory. Well, uh, I, I have a Christian neighbor, a uh, man just lives catty corner from me, and uh, he's a dear friend, and uh, uh, he's, he's dying. Um, his wife and daughter are caring for him uh, day by day, hour by hour. They have to turn his body every two or every four hours. And uh, um, on Friday, I was visiting with him, and I, they don't want people to come often because he's on hospice and he's dying. He's terminal. And uh, we were visiting, and he said, Cass, you know, I want you to know that you're one of my dearest friends ever. And I said, well, you know, Cliff, you're mine also. I appreciate that very, very much. If in this life only we had hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. And while I was praying with him, I, I prayed, prayed that verse. Uh, and it just came to my heart in in um, Psalm chapter 116, and verse 15, where it says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And he's, he's getting pretty close, but I, I know he's, he's ready. Well, th there are some questions that we have about heaven, and I'd like to address some, if I may, uh, such questions as, where is heaven? What about infants when they die or, or victims of abortion? You know, abortion, that's, that's what, we, what we like to think about as America's Holocaust. Every day, some hundreds of children yet unborn are killed in America. And why God allows this, we don't know. But there's a reason for everything. And God is not finished. He's still on the throne. Uh, do they go to heaven when they die? And then what about cremation? You know, people have different feelings about that. Uh, it really doesn't matter to me. But 
I, my personal opinion, well, I'll get to that maybe later. Um, will, will we know our loved ones in heaven? At the time of the resurrection, what will our body be like? We're going to change, you see. Well, is it presumptuous for us to say, I know that I'm going to heaven when I die? Well, there is no other way that we can learn these answers but by looking into God's Word, the Bible. Uh, they, they, the Bible takes precedent over everything else that we're told, from preachers, from teachers, uh, philosophers. Uh, I will endeavor to speak to these questions, each one, if, if, I, if I can make it. If I, if I, if I see I'm getting, running over time, I'm going to quit. I don't want to put you to sleep. Come on, hey. Come on, <laughs> if you want to write down the references, do so. Uh, but I'm going to try to, to, to read each one uh, so that you will be certain that you get the time to write that down. First of all, where is heaven? Uh, turn with me, please, in the Old Testament to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 14. Here we read about uh, the casting out of Lucifer, or Satan, out of heaven. Well, here we find in Isaiah chapter 14, beginning with verse 12. Follow along with me, please. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above all the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Notice that, sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. You know, Satan had a real problem. He still does. It's eye trouble. He, he, I, me, I, me, I, me, do the, and a lot of folks are that way too. Uh, heaven is above the stars, <clears throat> uh, and the sides of the north, <laughs> uh, we read that in many places through the Bible, but uh, listen to what uh, the psalmist said. Go back, if you will, Psalm chapter 48, verses 1 and 2. If you're writing them down, Psalm 48, verses 1 and 2. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Folks, that's where heaven is. Uh, go back a page to uh, Psalm uh, 48, or I'm sorry, 46. Psalm 46, in verse 4, it says, There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tab of tabernacles of the Most High. Uh, you know, a Christian... It's hard to, to speculate unless we have something to ground our faith on. And these answers are, are in the Word of God. And so people, you know, I have had all kinds of people tell me things about heaven. Oh, I saw this and I, I saw that. And, and uh, I know that when I die, I'm going to be an angel. <laughs> you know, uh, that always, well... It is no accident that our world revolves around the North Star. Every other star, every constellation, every solar system, they all make a complete circle around the North Star. God planned it that way. Uh, not only is heaven north, but it is also up. 
<laughs> you know, there's an old gospel song, I'm going up, I'm going up, I'm going up in the first resurrection. Well, you know, it's, it's up. I want you to turn to Acts uh, chapter 1, the very beginning of the book of Acts. This we read as the ascension of Christ when he left earth after he rose from the dead and uh, was ascending into heaven. Notice here beginning with verse 9, chapter 1 of the book of Acts. And when he had spoken these things, he told them where they, what they were to do and so on. While they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come again, shall come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. So, now, I, I want to say, too, long before Jesus ever was born in the flesh as God manifest in the flesh, Zechariah prophesied that one day, Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 4, if you want to write it down, Zechariah said that when he returns, and he is coming back, his feet are going to stand once again on the Mount of Olives. And so we see this was hundreds and hundreds of years before. Well, from anywhere and everywhere on earth, north is up. <laughs> we, go, we go north up to San Francisco, and well, who wants to go there? Anyway, uh, now uh, let me ask another question. What about infants who die or victims of abortion? Now, abortion, as, as I mentioned, is, is America's Holocaust. Um, millions and millions have been killed since the Roe vs. Wade uh, came into it. You, you know, the, the thought of abortion makes you kind of sick to your stomach. If you've ever seen any pictures or if you've, you've seen any uh, graphic words that uh, describe an abortion, regardless of what stupid men I mean stupid men, stupid because they don't know the Lord uh, and, and, they, and the demonic laws that they have brought about to our wonderful nation, abortion laws, uh, regardless of what they say, abortion is murder. Not only that, it's, it's, it's murder number one or taking of an unborn child's life is first degree murder. Uh, Genesis chapter 9 and verse 6, uh, if you'd like to write it down or even look at it, but it says, Whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. And yet every day thousands of people, mothers, fathers, and doctors slaughter babies. You know, you know, when I was a child, we, we, there were back alley things. We never heard about them. But when the, the law came around, then people came out of the closet, so to speak. And uh, now turn with me, please, to Second uh, Samuel, Second Samuel chapter 12. We read how that David responded to the death of his infant son. Um, that's a long story, but I, I don't want to, uh, I, I want to talk about the details of this. Chapter 12, and begin with verse 21. David found out that his son had died, and oh my, he was, he, his heart was broken. And it says, the servant said, this unto him. What thing is this, verse 21, 
that thou hast done. Thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive. But when the child was dead, thou didst rise and eat bread. And he said, while the child was yet alive, I fasted, I wept. For I said, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to be with him. But he shall not return to me. Verse 23. Folks, uh, I think this is a precedent. David was a man after God's own heart. And he knew God's will. And he said, he's not coming back to me. But I'm going to be with him. And where is he going? He's going to glory. That's where David went. You know, I have had many funerals of infants. Some who've drowned in the swimming pool. Oh, the hearts broken by grandparents and parents when a little child falls into the swimming pool and they can't find it. Where's, where's the baby? And find out that the child is down at the bottom of the pool. Um, these parents, these grandparents would have given their own life if they could bring him back. But they can't. But I believe with all my heart, just like David said of his little son, I can't bring him back. I can't. But I will go to be with him. Perhaps the greatest majority who die in the third world nations today are infants. I'm convinced that heaven is quickly populated by these babies. More so than those so-called civilized folk who, who do not trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary. If we know Christ is our Savior, um, God gives us a different attitude about things such as this. Well, what about cremation? Um, I have friends that uh, they, they know just exactly what's going to happen to them. They're my dearest friends. He said, well, when, when we die, we're all calling this number and one or the other, and they're going to pick us up and cremate us. And uh, I, I've always had a little feeling about this. I don't mind cremation. It doesn't matter. Uh, I always tell the wife that, you know, the trash comes on <laughs> Monday. But, and, but turn with me, please, to Philippians chapter 13. Philippians chapter 13, or if, I, if I'm going too fast, you know, sometimes I, I think, I think my, my, my precious son goes a little bit fast and we have a little difficulty uh, grabbing that scripture at the time. Philippians chapter 3, some folks have the idea that uh, they, should, they should preserve the body as long as possible so it'll be in better shape <laughs> when the resurrection comes or, or, or when, the, when uh, you know. Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. For our conversation, which means our citizenship as Christians, if you will, or our manner of living, is in heaven. Is yours? From whence, from whence also we look for the Savior. <laughs> I'm looking for him every day. The Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall change our vile body. This old body, boy, I, 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 you know, the older I get, the closer I get to glory, I think, Lord, uh, I'm glad one day you're going to give me a new body. No, he says, Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself, or, or he makes everything uh, subject to, to his will, to himself. Um, you, you know, there is nothing wrong with burning the body, believe it or not, of a Christian. When the believer dies, and I've been with many, when the believer dies, 
the soul leaves that body and it goes to be with the Lord. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 for a moment. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 8, um, sorry, verse 6, and then verse 8. Verse 6. Now he that hath wrought us is the same. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, let, me have that, let me have that first verse again. 2 <laughs> Corinthians chapter 5 and, and uh, verse 1 first. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1 first. We know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Well, you, you know, we do have, a, we do have a, 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 a new body. We know that. Not only that, Christians have a new house. Remember, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Immediately the soul goes to heaven, chapter 5 and, uh, and, and verse 6. Now, therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Now, verse 8. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. I think that's what Paul was thinking. He said, my goodness, I don't, I, I don't know how many days I've got, but he said, I've, I've fought a good fight, kept the faith, and uh, I'm ready to go. And that's the way we ought to be. Uh, you know, I, I love life. There's nobody that enjoys life more than I do. I have more fun than dragging a board. You guys dragged a board. You ladies sometimes. Uh, you know, I, I was talking to some folks when we were in Missouri, well, in fact, I, I talked in the Sunday school class, and I said, that's more fun than dragging a board. And the Sunday school teacher and his wife, uh, he, they went home and they made a board that says, dragon board, put a rope on it, you know, in case I wanted to drag it. <laughs> but if you never dragged a board, you've never had any fun. Well, so the believer goes to be with the Lord. And uh, we know that uh, God changes, changes his body. Um, now, the body returns to dust uh, again. I, I want you to go back to the very first Bi book in the Bible, chapter 2 of Genesis. Chapter 2 of Genesis, and look at verse 7. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. <laughs> Turn the page. Chapter 3 and verse 14. The Lord God said unto the serpent, Wait a minute, is that the one I wanted? Oh, verse 19, sorry about that. Um, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return to the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. But you know, the, the living soul lives forever, lives forever. Sometimes it's necessary to cremate bodies due to disease and due to uh, catastrophes that uh, strike cities. And All right, will we know our loved ones in heaven? First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12. For now we see through a glass 
darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. The Apostle Paul was looking forward to that. Now, wait, uh, he, he was going to say, I know I'm going to know these things a whole lot better later on. And I want you to uh, remember when David, we talked about David in 2 Samuel, and that child was born. He said, I will go to be with him. He was looking forward to seeing that son. What first first Thessalonians in chapter four? Boy, I'm making you jump around, but uh, if you if you're not picking them all out, write them down. First Thessalonians chapter four, and follow with me, please, as I begin reading at verse thirteen. And Paul, once again, is writing to those at Thessalonica. He says, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. In other words, those people that die. That, that we sorrow not, even as others, which have no hope. <laughs> See, our hope is in Christ. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, or if you will, precede them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, that might be you and me, yeah. shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now notice here, he puts on the end here in the end of me, he says, wherefore, scare each other to death with these words. No, no he, he said, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. See? Well, I'm looking forward to being with those that I love. I, w I want to see my daddy again. I want to see my mother. I want to see those who, many, many hundreds of people who I saw breathe their last time and went on to glory. Uh, Paul was describing what happens here. And he said, I don't want you to be ignorant about it. Well, every, everything it seems to prepare for that blessed moment of knowledge of one another. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut it short here. I want to just, I'm going to give, give you some scripture, but I want to tell you what it's all about. Uh, in Luke chapter 9, verses 28 through 32, Jesus took Peter, John, and James up into the mountain to pray. We call this the transfiguration, but the, the disciples saw Moses and Elias, or Elijah it was, uh, and, and they had been dead for years, but the disciples saw them. And uh, we, we also see that uh, uh, in Luke chapter 16, Lazarus, you know the story about Lazarus and the rich man and uh, both of them died. Lazarus went to uh, Abraham's bosom, or it was the Old Testament term at that time. And the rich man went to hell, or in Hades, lifted up his head. And, and, and he saw Lazarus over there and he, and, uh, in Abraham's bosom, and he said, hey, could we just send him over that he could dip the tip of his finger into, into the water and cool my tongue? Well... <laughs> Couldn't get much water on that, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing my daddy again and my mother. My mother was saved just shortly after I was, a few weeks later. And she was responsible for many being won into the kingdom of the world. She was a soul winner. Uh, it, it, somebody, she'd walk to somebody's door and they'd say, oh, here comes Shrivel Bible. You know? <laughs> so, but but she, she was... I, I could tell you some stories of those that she led to Christ. It's amazing. My daddy fell in love with the Word of God. Uh, I have in my file at home a handwritten um, commentary of the New Testament that my father wrote. 
verse, he'd read every day and he would write what he read about. And he only went to the seventh grade. Um, he died when he was only 12 years old. And <laughs> he died just uh, uh, two months after Mike was born. And um, Mike never saw his grandpa. His grandpa never saw him. <laughs> but somehow I wonder if he might be proud of him in glory when he sees, when he sees Mike standing here and preaching the word of God. Well, at the time of the resurrection, what will our bodies be like? We know it's going to be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Uh, let me give you one last scripture here, and then I'll quit, promise. Well, I, I, I try to promise anyway. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory, it is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. According to John, in chapter 3, in the first John, he says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Well, there are th other things I'd like to talk about, maybe another time. But uh, God is so good to us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time that we've had together. We pray, Lord, that you will bless us as we sing a song and uh, God, as we close this time and go to our time of fellowship, again, we pray for our pastor, Lord. God, bless him how we ask that you'd encourage him, strengthen him, and give wisdom to the doctors, nurses, and all who are in charge now. We commit him to you, commit ourselves in the lovely name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.